who's standing beside on, on the side and remember? Anybody has been to a stampede prayed? Yes? Five minutes ago. I mean, it was something very interesting, and you see people kind of so excited to see their favorite things and all that. Right? So, remember what happens in a parade? Do we remember? Yes, Madeline. That's one parade that we may or may not be doing today. <laughs> Okay, what else happens in the parade? What happens in the Calgary Stampede Parade? Yes. Lots of people, right? Yes, Madeline. Horses at the Calgary Stampede. Yeah, they go down the streets, right? Yes. There's lots of rides. But at the parade? I don't think there are rides at the parade, right? Lots of floats. Perfect. Yes. And what are, what are on those floats? What are those floats? Stuff. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. What else? Mm. Balloons. There's balloons. It's kind of like a party, right? People are celebrating, right? And then, yeah, party but moving. <laughs> and then when when and they're waiting for like things to watch that that go down the in the middle of the street, right? That's kind of what a parade is. So we ha here in Calgary, our big one is the Calgary Stampede, the Stampede Parade. Last year, there was a big parade in England. Does anyone know what that was? Because King Charles was coronated, and there was a huge parade there, right? Um, so we have a couple questions uh, for you. When you watch, I am, because I don't remember all of them. <laughs> I am looking. <laughs> Be because we care for the environment, Madeline. That's why we're not printing stuff as much anymore. <laughs> okay, so one of the questions that we have is, when you watch a parade, what's the reactions of the crowd? Yeah. What? You? What is that? They're very happy. That's this kind of saying, saying things and uh, kind of shouting and all that. Um, so to me, sometimes you know, when I watch the parade, I just scream and say something. Oh yes, or or oh yeah, or what do you call it in the stampede? Yahoo! <laughs> yeah, you know, they said. <laughs> Say something like that on all those things. Um, but what do you feel like when you see the, your favorite things showing up? You know, what do you feel? Unicorn. Unicorn. <laughs> <laughs> you, you? You're not happy, that's not here, but you're kind of excited. Uh, for us, this today is Jesus prayed. Jesus entered into Jerusalem. And everybody was saying, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who come in the name of the Lord. So that's kind of the excitement that people had when they saw Jesus walking down, to, coming into Jerusalem. So that's something that they have been expecting all their life to have a king or have Jesus coming into their life to just give them freedom from the things that they are struggling to help them, support them, and care for them in love. Right, so remember how we said last year there was a huge parade for King Charles? So it was, there was like, he was in a golden carriage, there were so many like things, right? But how do you think Jesus, the, the parade for Jesus was when he was going to Jerusalem? What was it like? Yes. 
He rode a donkey, right? It's not a very beautiful animal. And and there was no like golden gilded like carriage that carried him, right? So it's very different. Yeah. <laughs> yes, there was no metal bars to keep the people back so that they don't just crowd him. That's true. <laughs> Um, and there were palms there, right? But what do you think? So King Charles has a crown, but Jesus, did he have a crown? No, no right? So they're super different, right? Jesus, was, it wasn't really this huge, you know, crazy, like, fancy thing, right? And do you think if it, it was for a king, it'd be very fancy, right? That's what we think of kings. But Jesus was, was different, right? He was a different type of king. But is he a better king than, than the fancy ones, or what do you think? He's yeah. A yes, yeah. He's a better one than fancy one, yeah? He, <laughs> he's better than the government, no offense, okay. <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah, but I'm. He, did it, he only rode a donkey because he's so good, he didn't even need a golden carriage. Yeah, I think so too. Yes. Right, so it was a lot back then. There was it was a lot more simple. There weren't as many things that we have now today. That's true, but as you get, yes. Oh, so it would have been fancy, but the leader said the religious leader said that he didn't really trust Jesus, so it wasn't fancy. Yes, one more. Oh, why did the religious leaders hate Jesus? We might talk about that next week. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So, as a lot of you said that um, that Jesus, like, is is a much better than king than a fancy one, right? And because he's good, and of course he is, right? Um, and aren't we thankful that our king, as as Christians, right, is Jesus? That he's that he's, that he's so good that, as you said, that he doesn't need all the fancy things just to be king. He can just ride on a donkey, um, but he's so good, and he's much better than any other king we can have. Yes. Yeah. Yes, there's also a story that he made water turn into wine, so we also see that Jesus is a powerful king, right? Yeah powerful. Okay, how about we pray? We pray, and then we'll move on, yeah? Let us pray. Jesus, thank you for coming for us, for saving us all, Lord. Thank you for being a good king to us, a loving and caring king. Lord, you are our God. Be with us and guide us in all the things that we do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I thought I heard somebody talking about a parade. Yes. Weren't you talking about a parade just a few minutes ago? Pascal, weren't they talking about a parade? I heard that too. You heard that too? Oh, yes. Are we doing a... What do you think, Pascal? Could we do a parade? Yes? I think we should. You think we should? I wonder if you get that mic there. Maybe, maybe there's something that we could teach them. What do you oh, think? Oh, there we go. There we are. Uh, what, what do we need for parade? We need, um, uh, let's see. Oh, we have these. Yeah, okay, the we've got some. Uh, what else do we need? We have music. Oh, music. Oh, that's great. That's great. Do you want to teach us something that we could maybe sing for the parade, Pascal? Oh, yeah. I have something to teach you guys. Ah. Hey, hey, listen to me, listen. So, there's a song called Sana Sana Nina. Can you repeat after me? Sana Sana, sana Nina. Nina. One more time. Sana Sana, sana Nia. Look, 
the big kids are saying it really better than you. You better be better than them. One, two, three. Sana, sana, sana nina. nina. Okay, so you got that. That's all. That's a whole song. Now we have to put a rhythm to it. Oh. So the song is an alternative to Hosanna, which is in an African tradition. And so you'll be able to learn it and we'll sing it twice. I will play through so you can have your day of it. And it's really rhythmic. And so you'll be able to parade with it and we will have fun with it. How about that? Yeah. Huh? You have a question? I don't you don't? Well, you can try. You can see You'll Leora. teach that today. So how do you think we should learn it, Pascal? So, I don't know. Maybe I'll just play it. Play it? And then uh, everyone will listen to it. I'll play, I'll play it twice. Okay. And then we can sing together with our beautiful choir. Who They're ready, they're ready to sing it. Oh, I bet. Oh, they look like they're ready to sing it. Maybe you can play it and, and the choir can sing it and we can practice a little bit with the choir. Is that okay? I like the idea. So I'm going to okay. play one time. All right. And then the choir will sing with, me, with the piano and then everyone else will join together, including all you too, right? Okay. And then we have the congas too to play with us. The Landry will join us here. Hey. All right. Hi, Landry. Oh, that was pretty good. Oh, do, do you think we could remember the words if we actually did a parade now? I think we should do that. I, I think we should too. So everybody stand up. Stand up. And you know what? So I think some of us will go this way and some of us will go that way. And then maybe we'll come back down the middle and meet here again. Well, I think they should too, Leora. So we're going to invite anybody who wants to join us as we're walking by to come and join the parade and follow us back down here, okay? Are you ready, Pascal? Let's do it. Are you ready, Okello? Yes. Lanre? Let's go. Okay, let's go. Sana, 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 sana. Sana, sana, nina, sana, sana, sana. Sana, 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 nina, sana, sana, sana. Sana, 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 nina, sana, sana, sana. Sana, 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 sana. Sana, sana, nina, sana, sana, sana. Sana. Sana, 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 nina, sana, sana, sana. Sana, 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 nina, sana, sana, sana. Sana, sana, nina, sana, sana, sana. Sana, sana, nina, sana, sana, sana. Sana, sana, sana. Sana nina, sana sana sana. Sana 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 nina, sana sana sana. Oh wow! Look at that. The parade is still happening. Come on down. Come on down. The parade is still going on. Come on down to the front. 
And is everybody ready? We're going to go one, two, three, Hosanna. Ready? Should we do one more verse? Pascal, what do you think? What? Same song? Let's do, okay, let's do one more. All right. Sana, sana, nina, sana, sana, sana. Sana, sana, nina, sana, sana, sana. Sana, 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 nina. Sana, sana, sana. Sana, 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 nina. Sana, sana, sana. Ready? One, two, three, Hosanna. One, two, three, Hosanna! Oh, thanks so much, everybody. And we're going to let the smaller people go out to Sunday school. Well, the slightly smaller people, Leora. And we are going to sing together. And as the kids go out and everyone takes their seat, let's sing together number 218, verses 1 and 2. Let's sing. Let us pray. Lord, open our hearts and minds so that we may be fed by your word. Amen. Our first reading this morning is taken from Psalm 31, verses 9 to 16. Be gracious to me, O Lord, for I am in distress. My eye wastes away from grief, my soul and body also. For my life is spent with sorrow, and my years with sighing. My strength fails because of my misery, and my bones waste away. I am the scorn of all my adversaries, a horror to my neighbors, an object of dread to my acquaintances. Those who see me in the street flee from me. I have passed out of mind like one who is dead. I have become like a broken vessel. For I hear the whispering of many, terror all around, and they scheme together against me as they plot to take my life. But I trust in you, O Lord. I say, you are my God. My times are in your hand. Deliver me from the hand of my enemies and persecutors. Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your steadfast love.
So this next song we will be playing me and uh, Landry. Um, I composed it a couple years ago. Uh, I titled it My Praise to You. So I thought about it and I said, you know, I need a, an accompaniment. So he was right fitting for me to do that. So it's an instrumental piece and I hope that you enjoy it. Our second reading this morning is Mark 11, verses 1 to 11. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethphage and Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a, a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Just say this, the Lord needs it and will send it back immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, what are you doing untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancient ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. 
Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was ready, already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Sandy, for those readings today. And let us pray. Now, O God, as we hear again this ancient story and as we think about it in this week, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. Amen. Well, parades are fun, aren't they? Yeah. There, there's something, there's really just a, a beautiful kind of community that can happen in a, in a parade, just like we had here a, a few minutes ago. I guess there's different kinds of parades. There are, there are those parades that really are community. And many of you who, who grew up in small towns uh, know though those real parades where people would just come together, right? And they'd, they'd grab a tractor and they'd, they'd make a float and, and they'd have a little parade in the community. And it was, it was such a time for the community to come together. Even in, in smaller cities sometimes, many of you will remember parades like that. Maybe on Canada Day or or even on the Victoria Day weekend or other times of the year when the community would come together and they would have a parade and celebrate. And there would always be that, that celebration, that sense of community. And then there would always be the part where, where you might have, have the mayor or, or the reeve or, or whoever was in charge, you know, maybe in a car or, or maybe on a, a trailer or something and they'd be coming along. I always thought that was kind of a weird part of the parade myself. You know, you'd have the bands and you'd have all the fun stuff and then, and then you'd have these people kind of sitting there, you know, waving. Uh, but, you know, I guess it was a certain kind of representation of, of, of civic authority and, and of uh, the leaders of, of the town and the community, leadership. And then there's other parades too, you know, we, we might remember different kinds of parades. Some of you maybe grew up in countries where parades carried a very different sort of tone. I know I had a partner once who grew up in, in the former Soviet bloc, you know, and every time there would be certain types of parades here, she would say, I've had enough of parades. I've seen enough of soldiers on parade. Thank you very much. Hmm. Different kinds of parades. Some of you may have grown up in that sort of environment where a parade was used to project a certain kind of authority. So we have this parade on Palm Sunday. And how would we see it if we were there? You know, some of that crowd, a, a lot of that crowd were seeing it as, as a victory par a parade. They were, they were looking for, for the person who would come along and sort things out and make everything right again. They were looking for a strong man. And I say a man because it's usually a man. Sometimes there is a woman who kind of steps into that role. But we know them throughout history, don't we? We know those strong man sort of types. The types who come in and say, I'm here, I'm in charge, I know what the solutions are, I know how we're gonna solve our problems, I know how we're gonna free ourselves, I know how we're gonna do this, I know who's causing the problem and how to get rid of them. The strong man, right? And we celebrate them sometimes. When we're not vilifying them, we celebrate them. We look at people like Julius Caesar and Napoleon and, and, and we can wax lyrical about their leadership and so on and, and kind of ignore the fact that they were military dictators. And then, we, and then we sort of look at some of the people we see in the world today and there's, there's lots of examples of those strong men and some strong women too who step into that kind of role isn't there? There's some very close to home, there's some that are maybe a little further from home, but lots of familiarity with the strong man who's going to sort things out. All we have to do is, is turn on our news. And there are lots of them that I'm sure would love a parade, a big fancy parade. 
Well, you know, there's a reason that these strong men exist, right? Because, because it, it taps into our ideas about what leadership looks like. And, and it taps into our ideas about, about being in control. We don't like it, you know, when we're not in control in our lives. We don't like it when the world seems out of control. And it's so easy to think, you know, there's got to be a strong person somewhere, a strong man, a strong woman who can just step in and sort everything out. And so we're sometimes drawn to these strong people because, because they visibly project a certain kind of control, even if it's a bunch of BS. Even if it's totally made up, even if it's founded on nothing, even if it's a pack of lies, they project a certain sense of control. And, and we can be drawn to that and we can, we can start to go with it, even if it means giving up some of our freedoms, even if it means turning away from, from some inconvenient truths. We can kind of go with that because the promise is that they're going to sort things out and that everything will be under control. It's easy, maybe, to identify tyrants or tyrants in waiting. You know, and it's, it's easy to be a little bit smug about it. But really, the ideas that feed that are, are kind of present with us all the time, aren't they? The ideas about what power looks like, about what leadership looks like. We have all sorts of ideas about that. You know, even in the Presbyterian Church, which for many decades now has been ordaining women, look around at some of the big Presbyterian churches and how many women do you actually see leading those churches? We have ideas about what leadership looks like, right? We have idea about how that gets projected and what it's supposed to be like. And it speaks to us because we want control. We want, we want control in our own lives and we want, we want the world not to be out of control. And, and we're fed it in our culture. Think of the things we, we say to each other when, when we face you know, issues or problems or challenges. Uh, you know, I'm on top of this. You got this. You know, control yourself. We want our lives to be in control. We need to appear to be in control and we need to believe that we are in control because that's how we sometimes feel powerful in our lives when we actually really don't feel all that empowered or powerful at all. So we have these ideas about what leadership and strength looks like. But Jesus challenges all of this. He comes in as a king through the same gate that those Roman commanders would have rode through, but he comes in riding a donkey. Now think about that. There's, there's a lot of intention in that riding a donkey. It's not just that a donkey happened to be nearby. It's a contrast, right? It's a contrast. You've got the military leader coming in on a horse surrounded by troops, and here you've got this other guy coming in on a donkey, on an ass, looking like a fool, surrounded by children, surrounded by outcasts, but that's what Jesus chooses to do. And in doing that, Jesus is saying a lot about what real leadership looks like. There's a teaching in it, isn't there, about, about true power and that, that true power actually comes from another source. And when you're tapped into that source, there's no need to project it or to demonstrate it or to laud it over others. Because that true power comes from letting go, comes from surrendering. Ooh, now there's a word we don't even like that word. I bet you some of you had a reaction to that, surrendering. Well, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Surrendering sounds like defeat in the way we think about leadership and power sometimes. But there's another way of surrendering, isn't there? There's a surrendering into something. 
True power is about a letting go, a surrendering into the power of the source. And that's exactly what Jesus is doing very intentionally in this parade that we enacted today. He's saying, you're looking for a king, you're looking for a strong man, let me show you, here I come on a donkey and I'm surrounded by kids with palm branches. How do you like that? A lot of people then, just as now, would see that as absolutely ridiculous. This leader that they thought they had was being a fool and maybe making a fool of them. How would you see it? Would you see it as the parade of a king or as a parade of fools? In a way, Palm Sunday kind of sets the scene for all of Holy Week because, because in terms of the way the world looks at it, it all goes wrong, doesn't it? It ends up in defeat and death, apparently. It ends up with Jesus standing there, allowing, apparently, his accusers to, to hold sway. It ends up with people being scattered and confused. It looks like nothing good is coming out of it. For I hear the whispering of many, terror all around, and they scheme together against me as they plot to take my life. And in the middle of that, Jesus rides into town on a donkey to the praises of children. He remains true to his sense of power, to his idea of where power comes from, to, to where he knows power comes from. He remains true to that idea of surrendering and letting go into that source of power. Even in the face of everything that the world is throwing at him. Even in the face of terror and schemes and plots. He surrenders into the source of that power. And he rides in on a donkey with children singing his praises. And it ends in defeat. It ends in death, apparently. But I trust in you, O oh Lord. I say you are my God. My times are in your hand. Deliver me from the hand of my enemies and persecutors. Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your steadfast love. And Jesus rides into the face of terror with the knowledge that there is a source of power which is grounded in a love which is at the source and heart of this universe that even the most vile powers of the world cannot contest. Save me in your steadfast love. He rides to that cross with that knowledge. And on Friday it ends in what appears to be defeat. But we know that that's not the end of the story. But we're caught in that, that, that back and forth, aren't we? Would you, see, would you see the parade of a king or would you see a parade of fools? If you were there, in the events that we'll be recalling this week, would you see only Good Friday? Or would you be able to look to Easter morning? Would you be able to surrender and let it go and say, God, I don't know what's going on here, but I know that I'm going to be held in your steadfast love, and I know that there will be victory in that. We're going to sing together number 220. My song is Love Unknown.
Please be seated and let us pray. Ride on, O oh Jesus, ride on. In those events so long ago, that crowd that went back and forth wondering whether you were a king or a fool. And yet, you ride on. In our world today where we, where we face such fears, where it seems like everything is out of control, where we go back and forth and, and say, can we really trust this thing? Can we really trust in God or, or do we have to give our trust to, to the strong people who say they will sort things out? We go back and forth and still you ride on. Ride on, oh Jesus. Ride on through this week of, of mixed emotions and conflicted feelings, of wonderings, of faith and doubt, of fear and anger, of disgust, of hope, of faith, of timid trust. Ride on, Jesus, ride on. And in the words that you taught us, we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Jesus rides on in the midst of our faith and our doubt. In our offering today, take whatever is in your heart and bring it before God.
Well, we do hope that you will join us here at VAPC for this Holy Week. Uh, Thursday night at 7 at uh, one of our sister churches, Westminster, there will be a Monday Thursday service. Then here, Friday morning at 11 a.m., we will have our Good Friday service. And of course, 10 a.m. on Sunday, we will be celebrating Easter Sunday here. So we hope to see many of you for our celebrations during this Holy Week. Please feel free to take the palms home with you as a blessing for your home for this Holy Week. If you want to leave them, there is a bucket out outside and you can put them there and we do recycle them. We'll burn them for the ashes for Ash Wednesday next year. So take them home or leave them here in the bucket and they will be put to good use either way. We're going to sing again. Maybe a familiar tune, but different words. Ride on, ride on, the time is right. Go in peace and wonder through this holy week. Go in faith and doubt. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the companionship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. My name is Olanri Wadju Okorende, and I'm so, so, so honored to be here once again. Um, the piece I'll be you know, doing for us today is titled Oluwati Shonla. It's in my native language, Yoruba. And it means the Lord has done 
a great thing. Oluwa means the Lord. Um, Ohun means thin. And Unla um, uh, means big. So all together, Oluwa, She Unla, um, the Lord has done a great thing. And before I start um, on the piece, I just want to share um, that no matter what we are going through, uh, no matter the circumstances, the challenges, um, those dark times, let's always remember, um, let's remember those times that you know, the Lord came through for us. Those moments of victory, those moments where you know, we fought those battles and we won, we came, up, we came out victorious. Um, those little moments where joy and happiness just fuels our hearts, those are the great things that the Lord has done. And um, as we listen to the sounds, the redeeming and beautiful sounds and beats coming out from these conga drums, emanating from these conga drums today, I just want us to reflect on those moments, those times that you know, the Lord came through for us. And um, just know that if he did it before, then he, will always, he can always do it again. Let's remain blessed as we listen.
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, this part of the piece. Uh, this part of the piece. Um, we are going to do it together. All right. Um, I'm going to need you all to clap. Okay. Yes. I'm going to need you all to clap along. It's really easy. Don't worry. It's going to. I'm going to. I'm going to teach you how to clap along with me. So. Um, it's just going to go um, in groups of threes. So we're going to clap like this. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two. Beautiful, beautiful. Yes. Let's just keep doing that. And I'm going to...